What's going on guys, Liam here and it's time, top 8 predictions, the tier maker, who's going to play finals in 2024 guys, I absolutely cannot wait, not long to go to the footy starts now and um, let's get those predictions in guys, let's get those predictions in, I actually really miss doing videos, like especially the YouTube ones, like when the, when the season ended at the end of the last year, I'm not going to lie, I was pretty burnt out, I was like man, I can't wait to sort of stop doing videos for a minute. And then like two weeks later, I was like, oh man, I wish the footy was back on. <laughs> sake, I miss it, man. I miss talking trash with you guys. So obviously, I need your guys' predictions too. So maybe not 1-17, to 17, but maybe drop your top 8 in the comments, guys. Uh, let me know who you think's um, going to fly high, who's going to drop out of the 8, maybe, all that fun stuff. One of the reasons I love doing these videos is I love interacting with you guys. I try to get back to everyone's comments. Unless you've got trash chat, then I probably won't get back to you. But most of the time, I try and get back to you as much as I can. So um, get to it, guys. Like and subscribe and all that good stuff. I love it all. I love it all. Now, I was putting off doing this video for quite a while just because I think this is going to be the hardest top eight to pick we've ever had. Like, maybe not ever, but in a very, very long time. So normally it's quite easy. There's only really, I know everyone thinks their team can make it this year when they're down the bottom, but normally there's 10 teams max that can genuinely make it the eight. Sometimes you get a bolter like the Warriors, uh, but normally there's only 10 teams in contention, two teams drop out, two teams go in, roughly like that sort of thing, and uh, it's normally pretty easy to pick. You don't pick it in exact order, but you can usually, you usually get pretty damn close to picking your top eight. This year, I did a little video on TikTok, and I, I think there's like 13 possibly 14 teams that could genuinely make the eight this year. So I am worried I'm gonna. this is going to be absolutely horrible. But um, let's see how we go. So what I do is, guys, I do this a little bit different to other, other sort of ladders. I just do... Because it's impossible to pick at 1 through 17, right? It, just, it can't be done. So what I do is minor prem and spoon, obviously, out on their own. But then it's top four, which would just be three teams minus the minor prem. Who rounds out the top eight? Who just misses out on the top eight? Then the bottom four, then Spoon, obviously, as well. So, um, yeah, let's get this thing cracking. Now, what I normally do is, um, I, when to pick these, I'm not just guessing or picking teams I like. I do take in, obviously, players lost, players gained, strength of schedule, uh, runs home, back-to-back, -back, who's got the most short-day turnarounds, not back-to-back, so I'm still in NBA mode, uh, and stuff like that. So, um I have gone, been going over this for the past sort of two, three weeks, um, but I actually haven't fully locked this in. I was just like, man, let's just do this thing live and see how it pans out, all right? So we'll see how we go. Let's go. I have a very good idea who's going where, but there's, like I said, there's two or three, two or three teams I'm just like, could literally finish third. Like, there's one team in particular I'm going to go in, could finish, I think, third or could finish 13th. I'm just really, um, really stuck on it, sort of thing. So obviously, wooden spoon is Penrith Panthers. <laughs> funny joke, funny joke. Uh, so yeah, let's start with the spoon, guys. So I do think it is going to be, unfortunately, the red V. I don't know what's going on there. Um, even just I saw a news article come out the other day, them wanting to sign a moan on over a million dollars. What the hell? Please lower your dose, whoever is running the Red V. Um, yeah, that's absolutely terrible. Um, if we have do have a look at the strength of schedule, I don't think theirs is too bad. I think that, yeah, they've got actually quite an easy run. But I just feel like if... I feel like they were starting to give up at the last... And they're going to kick on and beat try hard at the start of the year. But if they, if they get off to a shocking start again, I mean, I don't see how they... I don't see how they turn up to... The games with their chest out for real. Uh, we will just have a quick look at the ladder from last year, so that would put them down one spot, um, sort of thing. So we move on to the Tigs. I actually don't mind. I think they're going to be better than last year. I actually don't think they were the worst team in the comp last year. If we do look at last year, they won four games. Bulldogs won seven, and Dragons won five. I actually, I was explaining this to someone that. I mean, they beat Penrith. They torched the Cowboys. They, um, 
they lost about six or seven games by less than 10 points. And um, like I said, they've won a lot of areas. Um, their, their Ford pack won the Ford battle a lot of the times. They won the ruck a lot of times. It was more just a little bits of polish on their game. So, for example, this is a this is a perfect one. There was a game last, last year that they needed to win um, in the middle of the year sort of thing. They're playing good, but just for example, three guys in a tackle, like they're on defense, three guys in a tackle, and all three go to marker. And it just, just sort of throws off the whole mark situation. Then a few sets later, same thing, three guys in a tackle, two guys peel off and only leave one marker there, dummy half shoots through the middle. Just little bits of polish like that that were missing from the game. Um, obviously, they weren't on the level as the top teams, but they were, I thought they were better than a lot of the bottom teams. Still love their forward pack, Happy Chorus out there. And... Um, I don't mind that Benji's there either. I think he's going to help out a lot. So, yeah, I've actually got a bit of faith in the Tigers this year. Not to kill it or anything, but to to get off the bottom of the spoon, man. Get off the bottom of the spoon. See if they can do do what the Doggies did last year, minimum. You know, like see if they can get seven games, and then they get then they get Lua the year after. Happy days, happy days. Um, I was a little bit that Blore dude they lost, and they did get um, oh, what's his name? Dude from PNG, oh, I can't remember his name. I've got to remember everyone's names again. <laughs> I'm a bit. I was a bit worried that they were going to try and get more strike in the backs and give up their forwards. Their forward pack is so good, and Luai's only going to be good under a good forward pack. So, um, yeah, I, I hope hope that forward pack stays healthy. And hopefully, I really like that blow they sent to Melbourne. It's a blow or bowl, whatever his name is. The guy they sent to Melbourne. Um, yeah, I really liked him. Next, doggies. Um, look, unfortunately for the doggies, I just, I'm not on the bandwagon with everyone else. Um, I'd love to see him do well, but I, I love. Let Let's not forget last year they they were miss like their forward pack was missing more tackles in a game than packs were losing. Were I think then like packs were losing in ten games. Like it was like Reed Marnie can't tackle. He was missing seven eight tackles a game. I mean, and Liam Knight, is it going to be their starting front rower? I mean, sh like, what's the old saying? Four packs win games, back decide, backs decide by how much. Now, I love that Crichton's there, all that sort of stuff, but he's not going to be able to do anything behind a beaten Ford pack. And um, I think they might start the year off okay, but, yeah, it's going to be it's going to be tough. And if you have a look at their draw, um, yeah, Parramatta first up. I mean, it's not the hardest draw in the world, like... If we, let's have a quick look at their strength of schedule. It's, it's in mid-pack, sort of. It says it's the hardest, but it's not. One of the hardest, anyway. It, it's um, it, They've got a lot of tough games in the middle here. Penrith, you know, stuff like that. But it's not that bad. Like, they should actually go okay this year. They've got a couple games. They never have a real bad block of games. Like, they'll play a hard team or two, and then it'll be sort of more of an easier game. They never It never goes like... Roosters, Penrith, Broncos, Cowboys, you know, it's never like, they're quite, they're, I actually don't mind their draw because it is broken up, like, you know, could be a couple of tough games and a, and a little bit of a double cup, oh, he actually spoke too soon, spoke too soon, there's uh, three tough games in a row, but yeah, I actually don't mind their draw, it's not horrendous, but yeah, I just, I can't, I can't see, I, I was saying this on another video on TikTok, like, I don't see a game where it's like, they will win this game. Like, even this game, like, will they win it? Like, there's not a single game here I'm like, they will definitely win this game. There's a lot of, they will lose this game, and they could win this game. Like, they could win a, a few games in here, but... Joyce should be tough. She's going to be tough. She's going to be tough. Now, next, unfortunately, I, I people are going to be saying, you're sleeping on the Titans, you're sleeping on the Titans. I'm not. I actually think they're going to be really good, and I can't wait to see what they do under Desi. But this is the thing about this draw. Like, you'll see as we, we start to fill this thing up, it is just hard to find spots. There's teams that are good enough to play in the top eight this year that won't play in the top eight this year. Like, I think the standard's going to be so high. The salary cap's doing its job. It's making these bottom teams stronger. But, yeah, it's it's going to be tough. It's It really is. And um, it's... They've got a tough schedule as well. 12 top eight teams from last year. It's just, yeah, it might be a little bit of a... They, I could see them moving up a bracket, like, to just missing out the eight, but I, I, I can't see them quite make playing finals this year, unfortunately. Um, 
this is the thing too. Everyone's saying um, Campbell, he's a fullback now. That's great. Like I love him at fullback. I think he's good. But I actually like Brimson better, just because he is a bigger body. I was never a fan of Brimson until sort of recently. But this is the thing, right? Jaden Campbell, like he, he he can rip teams apart, right? But the, the pro and his people go, well, this oh, this doesn't seem to be an issue. Yeah, man, against poorer teams, like. You know what I mean? When they, when they kick the ball down, he gathers it on the 10, he looks up and he's playing the Tigers and there's a staggered line and he can go bup, bup, bup and get a getaway. But playing good teams where you've got to beat good teams to make the top eight, kick it down to a corner, he scoops the ball up, looks up, Fisher, Harris, Moses, Leota, Brian Toto and Isaiah Yo in a perfect line bearing down on him. You can't step through that. You're getting, you're getting smacked. So um, I think, yeah, I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. I, I just want to see, Jay, um, it's Jaden Campbell, isn't it? Yeah. I want to see him um, get in the gym, start squatting, and just you look at you look at Reese Walsh. He's not a big body, but he's got he's got some legs under him, and that's why he doesn't get like fully manhandled. Um, has, it doesn't sacrifice any speed um, having a you know having a, a bit of bit of weight in the britches, bit of bit of size on the glutes. You know what I'm saying? It, it definitely doesn't hurt. So um, I'd love to see him put on a little little lower body size um, before. That's why everyone was so keen to get him in the first grade team last year and playing four minutes. I'm like, man, he's going to get injured, man. Like, he's, he's pretty small. Like, the game's it's tough, man. It's a tough old sport, this one. So um, that's what I'd like to see from him. But um, I'm just, I'm so excited. And to be honest, I'm, I'm happy to be wrong about the Titans as well. All right. Unfortunately for the Raiders, I think this might be a bit of a rebuild year. What I'm looking for the Raiders this year is um, obviously their forward pack looks great. They've got Hoskins as well, but um, just the halves is just going to be tough. They're, they're, to be honest, their whole spine, they really never they never really worked that out. They had a centre playing fullback last year. You know, obviously lost Jackie White as well. I have no problem with their forward pack. I actually like a lot of their outside backs as well, but it's just, it's a very strangely constructed team. And um, I just feel like, in a close game with 10 minutes to go, I would bet against the Raiders every against every team in the comp just about because I think they've got the most unorganised team um, sort of thing. So, uh, sucks. I love the milk. Um, you know, and maybe they can prove me wrong, but, yeah, that was a... It's a very oddly constructed team. It really is. Um, four packs, great. Everything else is very strange. So, we'll have to wait and see what their actual lineups are and how they look in pre prelims and all that sort of stuff, but super, super strange, and um, we'll have to wait and see. Next, the Dolphins, fins up, baby, or just fins half up. Um, I th these, got this, okay, so just before I did that, every, put the, I don't think I can drag this back down, I can. If I, looking at this now, this is what I was talking about. I don't see these guys in finals contention, but I genuinely see all these teams could easily make the eight this year. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So there's only twelve. I thought there was about thirteen or fourteen, but there is literally twelve teams that could gen like genuinely make the eight. And I think all these twelve teams will be battling for it. In what order, I don't know. Um, but I'm going to give it a crack and see how we go. But it's going to be it's going to be tough, man. It's going to be so tough. There's going to be some teams finishing in this next bracket that should be playing finals footy, but just dropped a game or two along the way they shouldn't have, and they don't make it. And that normally is Parramatta. Parramatta are the best at that, dropping games they should win. But we'll have to wait and see. So Finns, I, I think they're just probably going to be... I want them to make it, because I, I want the new franchise to <coughs> be a success. But... Um, yeah, I think it's going to be a little, a little, just just a little off. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if they literally finish ninth. <clears throat> but yeah, it's going to be damn close. It's going to be damn close. Um, I'm going to get the Cowboys. I think they're going to just miss out too. Main reason um, is main reason is um, they're just their away record is so poor. Like. I think over the last two years, which is a, they've essentially had this same core group of players for two years now, they literally just... I think their win rate, from memory, I think I saw on Random Stats Guy, it's in the 30%, but it, I think it's like 31% win rate in the last two years away from home. That's just... That's horrendous, man. That's really, really bad. Um, I mean, you don't have to win 60 70% away from home, but like, if you want to play finals footy, you have to... 
you have to win 45% of your, your away games. So if Cowboys are going to make the eight this year, they have to clean that up. They can't just rely on winning at home. That's just... Um, it's too much, man. It's too much. And um, Chatty Townsend as well looked way off for me. And um, another thing as well, this is just complete speculation, but Tommy Dearden did sign his big contract and did lock himself up for a long time. It's quite quite common that halves in that situation have a pretty poor year. You know, I've got the bag. Woo, party, party, party. Oh, that's right, I've got to play footy. <laughs> oh, man. So, yeah, it's going it's to be tough. But yeah, it's just, this is the thing. Both Cowboys could Cowboys could finish in the top four, and that's why I'm saying this is so damn hard. All right, next, and the only, there's only a couple of reasons I'm doing it just to miss the eight nights. I actually think they should make the eight, but there's two things I'm concerned about. One is it's still Caelan Ponga's head knocks. Let's not forget he killed it to the end of the year. I actually thought he was playing better than Reese. Let's not forget, man. One big head knock. That's two months without him in the team. That's really concerning. And uh, I know people say, well, he's not defending in the front line. He, he got five concussions the year before <laughs> um, playing fullback. Let's not forget that, but before he went to the bathroom with uh, Kurt Mann. So he, he, you can get head knocks at fullback, trust me. Um, but, yeah, it's that. And also, Dom Young, missing Dom Young. Now, I know it's, you're like, oh, heaps of teams miss wingers and stuff like that. For me, um, Caelan Pong, I loved... Loves going down the left, right? But this is why the Knights were so good at the end of the year and they were so brilliant to watch. They could go left, left, left and probe. Left, 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 probe and then just spin it right. The tries, the tries Dom Young was scoring at the end of the year, I don't think many other winners. Maybe, maybe, um, maybe DWZ and maybe Saab. Like, no one else was scoring on those tries. That, some of those tries, like, would not have been tries in any other team. Like, he barely had any space. He was upside down when he was doing them. It was absolutely nuts. And he was good for nearly two tries a game. Like, he was literally, he was, towards the second half of the season, he was literally averaging, like, 1.8 tries a game. It was nuts. So that's, like, 10 points a game they're going to be missing, almost, from how they looked at the end of last year. And they've got to find them somewhere else. You can't just keep doing running the exact same play with uh, with um, Caelan Ponga swinging it to... Um, Bradman best. You just drop another player on that side and you sweep, um, sort of thing. So they're gonna have to. It's a the other thing. Dom Young. Dom Young. I don't think he quite got the props for this as everyone deserves. He, his meters were game were crazy at the end of the year. So they're gonna be missing some meters. They're gonna be missing at least six points a game. So that could just bring them back a little bit. And if Caelan Ponga does cop another knock, I think. Um, I think they could be in big trouble. I think they could be in big, big trouble. But I think they'll be in and around the eight, sniffing around again. And if Caelan Ponga gets good, again, they could finish in the top four. Like, it's just absolutely bananas how good that guy was playing. So, super pumped to see that. Now, this this is where it got hard. Like, this part. Look at the teams that are left. And this, this was the issue I was really struggling with. It was, to me, either Parramatta or the Sharkies aren't going to make the eight. Now... Sharkies have the easiest schedule again, but again, remember, this doesn't necessarily mean that it's an easy schedule. They're only playing nine top eight teams from the year before, but some of those teams are better now. These teams are better now, so they're not. it's not like they're all locked in like they once were, um, sort of thing. So it's it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough for them, and I'm just so on the fence with it. I just When I just line up the two teams out of Parramatta and Sharkies, I like Parramatta a little better, even though the schedule's technically a little harder. I just I do like Parramatta a little bit better, just because. Yeah, I'll get into that. But Sharks, Sharks for me, just they really have to. I mean, where'd they finish last year? Ended up sixth. Yeah, they died at the end of last year, and I love Nico Hines, but I just I, I just feel like he's been given enough opportunities in big games to step up. It's now been semi final uh, two sets of semi finals, two sets of origins and then Australia and he was really poor in all of them. I love Nico. He's probably one of my favourite rugby league players, just on and off the field, absolute legend. But I just I just don't know if you can step up in those big moments anymore. You know, it's just it's getting to the point where it's a, a chronic pattern. Like it, it was already a pattern. Like you could pretty much know if 
the Sharks played a top six team, they'll lose. So if some of these other teams step up and they, they're not as poor as we thought they were going to be, these Sharks could drop games they were winning last year. You know that, And that's my, my theory behind it. Still love their team. Um, and again, I wouldn't, would not even be slightly surprised if they make the top eight. Not even slightly surprised. All right, so that goes us on to Parramatta. What's the matter, Parramatta? Now, their draw, I remember looking at their draw, and um, I'd really like to look at runs home. Um, now, they, they sort of got stuck. They got pretty stung this year with their draw again. It's not a great draw, but their back end of their season is much better. Now, remember, they had the bye at the end of the year last year. This time, they got the Tigers. If you, This is the perfect time. You want your bye like round 20, round 21, right? Because you, you get a nice, you get just get a nice freshen up before the finals, round twenty, round twenty one, and then you get a nice little play yourself into some form for the last four or five rounds, sort of thing. So, um, they they I wouldn't say their draws like it's an easy run home, but it's they get this by, they get Storm at home, much better at home. They get the Warriors in that's that's tough. Now they have the Panthers at home for every other team in the comp. That's a tough game, but. They've got a very good record against Penrith, and these two are tough as well. So it's a tough run home. But the last two games relatively easy, and they started their seasons really good. So if, if Parramatta are going to make, they've, they've really got to start knocking off some of these these games here early. Start knocking off, you know, your all those teams there, and make sure they're finishing those games. And then they're going to have to win these 50-50 games, you know, sort of thing, and make sure they're finishing some of the lower teams. But the reason why. I just I actually had them dropping out of the eight originally. Again, we're missing the eight again. But I just look at their team and it's so good. Like it is, it is actually a really, really good team. Like they're no team's perfect. Like they're, they're probably missing an outside back or two. Um, they're, they're hookers. They got two like they got a good, experienced hooker and a, a good yuck and up and coming one, but nothing locked in there. But you, you look at the other stuff they got. It was funny, do you, do you know when I decided I thought they were going to make the eight? And I hate this, but I was putting together my fantasy team or um, super coach team. And I was just like looking at their play. I'm like, I, my team almost ended up full of Parramatta players just because I was like, man, like this, like Sean Lane on the left, cheap. You know, you got, you know, hop good. And then you just, it, the team is stacked with good players. Their four pack is so good. Their front row, arguably. I mean, I'm not not individual players, but just the starting two front rowers. It's it's top three, I'd say, maybe four. Absolute worth five. Like Junior Paul, R C G are super. As far as clubland goes, they're way up there. And then you got two of them. Their halves. I heard people saying it's the best halves combination in the comp. Not because either one of them's the best, but like compare it to, you know, like I mean, obviously. Broncos is probably right up there now too. But even if you say compare it to Penrith, yeah, okay, clear is better than both those players. But you know, Dylan Brown's probably better than than Jerome Lua. We saw what he did in the, in the Kiwis games and stuff like that. He just had a disrupted year last year. So if you talk about just like a top five, top five starting front row, a top three starting um, halves combination, and the great lock, great edge back rowers. You know, it's Clint Gutherson's always gonna you know do his thing and ball play like crazy, and it's just it's just a really good team. So. Parramatta, to make the eight, to me, all they have to do is not lose to teams, not lose to these teams, 100% not lose to these teams, win more of these games than you lose, and just jag a few games off these guys, and they make the eight, they make the eight, they really do, and that's, that's sort of my opinion on them, it's just, yeah, I think it's going to be there. Next is the Waz, just dropping down a little bit for me, not because it's a bit, little bit of a similar to the to the Kalen Ponga situation with the Knights. It's just Sean Johnson is pretty old. He was starting to fall apart a little bit at the end of last year. His car, he had those calf issues. He had some bits and pieces. I just they've got heaps more travel than any team in the comp. I just feel like. They could almost be a better team and still finish a little bit lower than they finished last year, if that makes sense. I don't actually think they... When I say they're going to drop out of the top four, I don't think they're going to drop. I just think a couple teams are going to come up. I dare say they're going to win roughly the same amount of games as last year, maybe one or two less. And then, you know what I mean, just because some of these other teams have improved a little bit. But 
I see the Warriors having a really good year. I actually want the Warriors to finish either first or second, fifth or sixth, so they get a home final straight away. So up the Wars, do your thing. Um, next, Bunnies. I think they're going to be crazy scary this year. Um, I just think, um, yeah, I think there could be little stints, and it's going to take a little bit of working out, especially I'm not too sure what edge Jack Whiten's going to play. Um, and that sort of determined, like, it could be a little clunky at the start. We don't know how smooth that left edge was. And then, I mean, Campbell Graham's particular right edge, so you'd assume he'd go on the left if they try and find Jack Whiten too much. I mean, you know, because we don't know. So I think there could be a little feeling out process. But um, if Totola's healthy, I think they lost him. And uh, obviously Latrell Mitchell's healthy. I think that'll really uh, go a long way as well. So... Um, I think they'll finish in the eight. I just don't think it's going to be like a crazy top four hectic season from them. Um, yeah, but we'll have to wait and see. We'll have to wait and see. Next, I just feel like Storm are going to drop out of the eight. They have got the toughest schedule in the comp. I just, I'm not, I'm not feeling there. I know they added Bloor. They got twelve things, um, a lot of travel, all that stuff. And uh, I just had a look through their team, and I'm just. Just not that impressed, and um, I've got to admit, for the first time in a very long time, I was just pretty disappointed with Munster over a period of time. Like Munster has heaps of bad games. He does. It's almost like he gets bored against bad teams sometimes. But I just feel like he had a lot of opportunities to be Cam Munster last year at the end of the year, and he really didn't. And um, we'll have to wait and see. But yeah, I feel like they could easily drop down, even if it is just dropping to fifth. And that's same as the Warriors. I mean, going from fourth to fifth isn't a a failure, you know, sort of thing. So, um, but I'm not dumb enough to write them off. But man, I had a look through their draw, and um, where was it? I can't remember where I saw. Um, it was it was either a real tough star, or a real tough end. Well, it is, you know, Cowboys in the Broncos. I mean, this is tough. This is tough. Storm, like, look at look how it ends. It goes: Bunnies at home, Penrith at home, Dolphins. So away. And then Dolphins at home, and then Cowboys away, That's and then Broncos away. That's how it finishes. They could genuinely lose four of these last five games. I don't think they will. But there's a chance they go like one and, f one and five, one and four in their last five games sort of thing. So, um, yeah, it could be a tough slog for them. They're going to be want to be right up there. Who's their, who's their first three? I really like um, using the end of games. So they've got Panthers. That's going to be tough. They got Panthers, then Warriors, and then Knights. It's a, it's a tough start, and then they've got a real early buy, and then Broncos. So they've sort of got a hard start, and then a hard end, and the middle must be a bit soft for them, um, sort of thing. But yeah, I could see them having a little skid, um, but I'm not dumb enough to write them right off. Now I know what you're thinking. You're like, what the hell is Manly still doing there? What the hell is Manly still doing in the top four? Now, I actually sort of, this is sort of funny. I, this is the team I spoke about at the start of the um, video where I said there's a team I think could finish third and there's a team that I think could finish 13th and they're the same team. I, I really like what they've done. I like the additions they've brought in. And this pretty much all depends on the fitness of Turbo. And um, if they find a spot for Schuster how they sort of play that. Now, I, I love, I, Luke, I don't care what anyone says. Anyone that says Luke Brock sucks just doesn't understand rugby league too good. They just look from the outside in. It's very, very easy to sort of rip someone that plays on the Tigers and say they're crap. Luke Brooks is a Robin. He's not a Batman. He doesn't have to be a Batman. It's not. He doesn't have the million dollar contract anymore. He can just sit back and play some footy. And there was a few games last year. I was like, "Wow, he probably is worth a million bucks." And then you see the next two, and you're like, "I oh, know it's clearly not." Um, but I, I love that addition. I still love the four pack. They've got tons of speed on the edges. Cola, Saab, all those guys. If they can stay genuinely fit and healthy, I there was games last year where they ripped ripped teams apart by 50, 60 points. And then they would just, you know, whatever would happen would happen. Like, they, they ripped a couple teams apart by 60 points without Turbo. Like, that is insane. Like, that is absolutely insane. Maybe 50 points or 40, whatever it was. But they, they ripped a couple teams apart um, easily. And, um, yeah, I, 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 they were the one team. I picked them because I just I had to make a bold prediction. It can't, it can't be boring. I, I need someone in there that's going to 
no one's going to have, no one's going to think of. I look like a genius if it hits. And if it doesn't, I can say, ah, oh, it's just a bold prediction, bro. You know? <laughs> so that's my bold prediction there. I think um, if fit and healthy, I genuinely think uh, the Seagulls could do some damage. I really do. If Yeah, I really like the way that Ola Kawatu, another year under his belt, uh, I think it's they're, they're a scary team, man. If Sibley can hold on to the ball and... Because he, he looks like damn near one of the best props in the comp from random games. It's just all about consistency and staying healthy. And I think I think genuinely think Manly could be a top four team, which is just crazy. All right, Roosters. Yeah, so how do Roosters finish? Bunnies. <sighs> Love that. Uh, yeah, so look, Bunny, they, they, these guys, so they've got the bite at that nice time. Then they've got Para, Titans, Raiders. But, so they could genuinely get 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. They could genuinely get 10 points in these last sort of five rounds. Um, I mean, even if they drop a game, let's say they do lose this final game. I mean, eight points in the final five rounds is great. So, um, yeah, I think Roosters are going to be right up there. Again, it's just going to be all how they start. Like, they keep they keep finishing years strong, but they, they're they not starting them great. I mean, I don't like this game for them at all. I think they could back, possibly come back and win this one. Then they've got another tough one. So they've got another tough start to the season. To me, they, these these are tough four games to start to see. They have to go 2-2. Two and two. They can't go 0-4. Oh they can't go 0-4. Oh they need two of these games, whether it is they knock Broncos off and then knock the Rabbitohs off, whatever. But they, they can't start the season 0-4. And, and if they do, I'm, I'm, they're not finishing the top four. It'll probably be a similar situation to last year where they come home strong and make a run, but they never really were in it. Like I was, I'd, Not for one second, no offence, uh, Roosters fans, that I think the Roosters were a threat to the, to the Broncos or to the Panthers. Not for a second. Not for a second. They had to burn too much gas. All right, dun 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 Who's going to be the minor prem? <sighs> yeah, I think they're going to be the most consistent team. Penrith Panthers. Um, I know they've lost a bit, but I actually don't mind who they've got. I mean, they're, they're so deep in the centres. It's... I mean, they've got Tyron, they got Tyler May is probably going to be there. Then they've got Tyron Peachy and Alamotti. It's just so scary. And then Spencer Lenu, as good as he is, I, I personally think he's the best, was the best bench front rower in the comp. They won so many games without him there. They won so many games with him only playing 15 minutes. Like, was he genuinely contributing to them winning constantly? Not really. So, like, it's just, yeah, it's going to be tough. Now, Broncos for me. They're going to be so tough to beat. I just, I don't see Penrith losing a ton of games. They shouldn't, should definitely win. You know what I mean? I, I just see them being the most consistent. The most consistent team over twenty six rounds, twenty seven rounds, whatever it is, it usually wins. You know what I'm saying? So, I can't remember who said it. I think it might have been Andrew Johns a long time ago. But you know, roughly twenty four games in a season. Um, you know, there's for for these teams here, it's usually. There's eight games you're going to win. There's eight games you're going to lose. It's how you go in those other eight games determines where you finish on the ladder sort of thing. And I don't see Penrith losing those middle eight games, like any of them. They might drop a game or two along, you know, a game or two, three, four, five, maybe maybe even six. But, yeah, it's, it's I just see them being the most consistent. Now, Broncos, I still have Broncos in the top four. I could see them sliding from second. Um, not because I think they're going to be horrible or they've lost so much they can't recover. They've still got enough firepower there to finish in the top two or even win the minor premiership. Like they, they could win the minor premiership for sure. Um, there is an adjustment period. Now, this is the thing with Broncos. I'm going to do a full video, guys, on Broncos and Penrith. Like, will there be a rematch in the grand final um, But of the grand final? But... It's just, it definitely is going to be a feeling out process. One thing I was really worried about them, them losing is, so they lost, first we'll go with Herbie. Herbie, I don't think people realise how many metres, like forget the tries, like great tries, but like the work he did getting out of the back end is just crazy. You know? and, and then the, the problem is they put Cobo in that spot. I couldn't think of a lazier player in the NRL, to be honest, maybe Latrell, I don't know. But going from one of the most high energy just go, go and get the work, get dirty, blah, blah, blah. You go from that to someone that's almost like 
reluctant to take a carry sometimes. And then you go to Kate, Kirk Catewell, not even close to the best second rower in the game. Like I'd almost call him mid. I know he is better than that, but it's not like he lit teams up and that's why the Broncos were going great. But that experience, tying up that edge defensively, his chat, all that sort of stuff's big. But the big one for me, they're all big. Um, losing Flegler, then also losing... Is it Palacia? Is he the one that went to the Titans? I think it's his you know. So they essentially lost their... One of their starting front row origin player. And then not only that, so normally if you lose a good front rower, your best bench front rower then comes in and you're sort of good. They lost, lost you know, I mean, he's not their best front rower, but a state of origin Australian front rower. Then they also lost, in my opinion, their best bench front, front, front rower. And people like Fletcher Baker's going to fill his shoes. Fletcher Baker's trash, man. Fletcher Baker sucks. Like, I, I don't think he's going to get minutes. Think about this for a second. Fletcher Baker was at the Roosters. Roosters were missing three front rowers, okay? And Fletcher Baker was still getting played off the bench and only getting 15 minutes. Clearly, that dude is not very good. Like, that is ridiculous. Like, they had no one. They were, they were playing Nat Butcher ahead of him. They were playing, who's a, a small, I'd say he's a small second rower in, in the front row. So, I don't think he's... Uh, Truth, and then the other guys are good but young, so we'll have to wait and see. So there's some serious holes in the boat there that they have to fill really quick. And they could drop a few games early just trying to figure that out, but they've still got so much strike there. They've still got so much firepower. Um, and they've still got... And the, the problem is, too, the reason why Broncos forward pack was so good last year was... You couldn't you couldn't put an extra drop an extra man onto Payne Haas or anything because you'd just go, Payne... Um, Paddy flags and it's just like it's just like this triple piston going bop 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 and if you if you put extra men on any one of them the other guy would just just carry two dudes comfortably for another four or five meters and get a quick play of the ball but um, yeah it's going to make it a little bit tougher but yeah I don't um there's talk about Paddy playing in the front row he isn't a big body I've said this a few times but I saw him down at the shops down near my place and um I was surprised how small he was. I was like, what the hell? Because TV makes him look bigger, man, I'm telling you. The TV makes him look a lot bigger. Another one, actually, from the Broncos, I was shocked how small he was when I saw him. was Marty Tapao, because he looks like a beast. I saw him, I was like, what the hell? That dude is so small. It's nuts. Um, not so small, but, you know, small from, smaller than they look. Um, but, yeah, that's it, guys. So let me know what you think, guys. Drop them in the comments. Where do you think I've gone wrong? What do you think I've nailed? Um, like I said, any one of these teams could go up. Any one of these teams, in my opinion, could go down, including this one. I, de I genuinely think these three are probably the only three that are... Pr to be honest, the only two I think are genuinely safe is probably Panthers and the Broncos. Roosters could slip out. I just don't think they will. And um, Spencer Lino coming in as well. He's, he's going to add a lot. Spencer Lino and Terrell May in the same team. God damn, that's some strike. Um, that's it, guys. That's it. That's it, lads. What do you think? What do you think? Hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it at that. I'm leaving it at that, guys. All right. So, um, thanks for hanging around. If you're still still watching, guys, absolute legends. I'll um, I'm gonna start dropping more videos just as things kick off. We'll start doing some videos around prelims. Um, I'll start doing some. I've got a couple videos planned as well, guys. So, um, thank you all so much for hanging around, guys, and I'll see you on the next one.